How good is the new AIO version of the RTX 1590 compared to this? Because comparing it to the box, <laughs> can you see how big of a difference that is? It's like this 1590, which is huge, suddenly became small. Basically, there are two ways to cool a GPU. Air or water. And usually the usual ones that you see behind there, and most of the ones that I've used on the channel are air-cooled cars, because it's simpler. You just put a heatsink there, then blow air to it, and then it basically cools it down. But the benefits are a lot better cooling, and a lot better cooling on a graphics card usually means a faster graphics card, which means we can get the clock speeds higher. In terms of the same power, we're pushing the same power from the GPU, but we're getting higher clock speeds because the GPU is cooler. The GPU temperature is 59 degrees. The GPU temperature was 84, 85 degrees. We are literally like 25 degrees lower. That's absolutely ridiculous. Absolutely bonkers how much better this is in terms of temperatures. This Arctic Storm is the best RTX 5090 I have tried. And I don't remember myself being as excited about a GPU performance when I tested the ROG Platinum Matrix one, because that was impressive design, but this now is extra 125 watts and it seems quieter and better in pretty much every single way. If you want a silent GPU that powers 575 watts, in fact, what is it, 586 maximum what I can see over there. There is, I don't think, any other GPU that can do that unless you go fully custom water-cooled. Throughout that time, the maximum temperature that the GPU has hit is 59.4 degrees. Now, my friends, is pretty crazy if you didn't understand that. If we're looking at the air-cooled car, they're not just 10 degrees warmer. It's crazy. This guy is the one. 